Hey everybody, let's just start out by saying, Rush fans, you're wrong about Roll the Bones. Roll the Bones was released on September 3rd, 1991. It's produced by Rupert Hine and Rush, and they did an excellent job. This is uh, what Rush should be doing at this point. If they're done with prog, prog epics, and then they should be writing modern tracks like they were in the early 90s. And uh, just staying away from, you know, what does it sound like? Uh, it's it's poppy, so it's um, in the key of G. Uh, sounds like a late 70s Kiss album, the way they produced, like, Unmasked. Okay, it's rock, but uh, a lot of the edge has been taken off. The vocal issues that plague Presto are gone, and Getty sounds perfect on this album. The keyboards are light and in the background, and they're never in the forefront of the music. It's guitars, bass and singing and the keyboards are in the back okay with that let's get right into it oh let well, how about the cover let's do the cover first these are all dice and it says rush roll the bones and that's a kid kicking a skull and uh we like that and um in the back it's got um it's got bones to continue the bones theme and then these are all dice and that's a window and in this case the window is uh blue sky so we know with rush they like to put skies on the albums and um, this is a blue sky with some clouds. Now on the back of the insert, uh, this looks kind of ominous with these wishbones and then the you know, brownish clouds. I don't know what's going on there. Maybe some kind of storm. You know, we got some pictures. This is nice. Um, this is a nice booklet. You got the lyrics in it. You got more pictures of bones and clouds and stuff. And you got nice pictures of the bands from circa 1991. You know, we got Alex here and Neil Peart. And that's kind of cool. And then Getty. Getty's becoming... Getty Lee's one of my heroes. <clears throat> and um, let's see, who did this one? Is it... Um, is this a Hugh Sim? You know, I forgot to look it up. Uh, Le Studio. Okay, so they like Le Studio. And is it a Hugh Sim? I, get, I, I don't know. Art direction and design by Hugh Sim. It is a Hugh Sim. Of course it's a Hugh Sim. He does all of them. This looks like an elephant's butt or something. I don't know what that is. And of course, um, for me, uh, this is Atlantic Records, and it says it's stamped right here. But also, I've, I've had this for so long. This is a BMG. So um, I, used to, I used to do the uh, BMG thing, and uh, that's how I got a lot of cheap CDs in the 90s, and I have this one. And I listened to it a, a bunch of times in the 90s, but really... I listened to it a lot this year, a lot, okay? Uh, okay, so let's get into it. Number one is Dreamline, 4 minutes and 30... God, I can't read with these glasses. 4.36. Dreamline is a song about young lovers on the run, on a journey, and this is where the risk concept of the album starts. To get hitched is a risky proposition because so many marriages don't work out. It's a great start to the album. Good song. Opening number on the Test for Echo Tour and the Different Stages live album, it's on there. And uh, I love this song, Key of G Major. Those are, that's a pop, those are pop chords, if you don't know, major chords, G, C, and D. And those are common in pop songs and they're easy to play and to sing along with. And I bet at this point in his career, it probably fits Getty Lee really well. Um, oh, there's E. Yeah, that makes sense. So it's a verse, 14 bar verse. Uh, by the way, only someone that loves Rush as much as me would count out Rush songs. <laughs> it's a it's a 14 bar verse about ish, um, and then chorus one is 16 bars and chorus two is eight bars two times, which is 16 bars, and it's a verse chorus verse chorus, chorus two, three times. And then a guitar solo, and then a chorus, chorus one, two times. Okay, that's the song. Great start to the album, Dreamline. Track two is Bravado, four minutes, 55. I don't know if that's 35 or 55. Four minutes and 35 seconds. Uh, Bravado is another song about taking risks. This album is already off to a much better start than Hold Your Fire and Presto. Alex playing... Uh, easy really cool leads right there and getty is just in the background doing his eighth note 
bass licks that he does all the time, and it's in, also in the key of G major. And uh, Getty singing, "If the dream is won, though everything is lost, we will pay the, we will pay the price, but we will not pay the cost." Okay, that's my terrible singing. It's a verse, chorus, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, outro. Uh, good song. Track three is Roll the Bones, five minutes and 30 seconds. Um, and it's the title track to the CD. A song about taking risks and chances like a game of dice or cards. Roll the Bones takes on a new meaning for Neil Peart after a dark 1998-ish, uh, you know, his, it's really tragic, but his daughter and wife passed like back to back. Um, this is right around 97, 98, somewhere in there. And um, uh, the song is played on nearly every Rush tour. And it's a fucking cool Rush song. Uh, the rap part is Getty Lee with his voice turned down and masked. Uh, I would call the rap part the bridge. And the bridge is repeated. Again, it's key of G major. And 111 beats per minute, which is pretty... It's like a slower Rush tune, actually. Uh, the verse is 16 bars. Um, there's a little fudging at the at the beginning and end of the verse, um, and that's how you that's that's how you get to that 16 bars. The pre-chorus is 12 bars, and then the chorus is eight bars, and the bridge is about eight uh, about 10 bars. Uh, it depends on where you start and stop the bridge, and um, there's no guitar solo. It's a verse. Pre-chorus, chorus, verse, pre-chorus, chorus, bridge, repeat the bridge, pre-chorus, chorus, outro. That's the song. Thumbs up for Roll the Bones. Track four is Face Up, 3 minutes, 54 seconds. Key of G major, again, fast tempo. Uh, faster tempo than the song Roll the Bones at 151 beats per minute. This one's really rolling. And uh, Neil's written... Face up, turn it down, or turn that wild card down. Face up, turn it up. Face up, turn it up. Or turn that wild card down. Face up, turn it up. It's another song about, I guess they're playing cards. So is it, um, I don't know, if they're playing poker or blackjack or bullshit or something. But, you know, they're talking about turning the cards over. So it's a gambling song. It's a verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, chorus, chorus, outro. That's the song. Track five is Where's My Thing? Part four, Gangsters of Boats trilogy. <laughs> Three minutes and 49 seconds. Now, Gangsters of Boats is, a, is another Rush joke. That's some inside hardcore baseball right there, hardball. Um, it's not a real trilogy. And here I was all ready to create a playlist on my iPod, and but there it's not. There's also Leave That Thing Alone, which is on Counterparts, which is also an instrumental and... Um, it sounds similar enough for one might think it's part of a trilogy, but this is just a joke by Rush. Anyway, it's a good instrumental with Neil hammering away on chords. And um, the part at 37 seconds sounds like it should be the music of a TV show before they go to a commercial like um, like 1980s WWF wrestling or something. But it's like a... You know what I mean. Okay, track six is The Big Wheel. Uh, five minutes, 13 seconds. Uh, well, I was only a kid, didn't know enough to be afraid, playing the game, but not the way the big boys played. Nothing to lose, maybe I had something to trade, the way the big wheel spins. That's pretty much the whole song. He's, um, he's talking about playing the game and taking the chance, and the way the big wheel spins. I don't know if he's thinking the price is right, or the wheel of fortune, or just the big wheel in general, like the big wheel of life. Um, but Neil, um, Neil is really dialed into the theme here. And it's a verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, chorus, outro. Um, and it's got a big bang and beat to the song. Track seven is Hearsay, five minutes, 26 seconds. A song about the changes the rural experience in the late 80s and the early 90s. Uh, the bridge is played twice for a total of 16 bars. And uh, Getty Lee singing all around the dull 
that dull gray world from Moscow to Berlin. People storm the barricades, walls go tumbling in. The counter-revolution, people smiling through their tears. Who can give them back their years and all those wasted years? I mean, he's singing about the... Really singing about the Eastern Bloc and how tortured and tormented people were. They didn't have freedoms and um, all the wasted years of tyranny, really. It's about tyranny. And, but, you know, again, he's doing it in the... Um, the way he's singing about it, it's like a game. Uh, track eight is Ghosts of a Chance, five minutes and 19 seconds. This is an excellent song. Whenever I hear it, hear it, it stops me in my tracks and I get lost in it. It's a, it's F sharp major in a minor modal. And what that means is, so F sharp is a uh, half step lower than G. And it's a minor modal, so they're, they, you know... Um, they're hitting the minor notes. I, I have a big David Gilmore-ish. Um, it has a big David Gilmore-ish opening riff before it goes to the arpeggios of the verse. Um, and uh, I'm trying to think of a song that, that that it's like, but when I hear the beginning, that's what I think of. Okay. The chorus is, I don't believe in destiny or the guiding hand of fate. I don't believe in forever or... Love is a mystical state. I don't believe in the stars or the planets or angels watching from above, but I believe there's a ghost of a chance we can find someone to love and make it last. That's fucking awesome. Okay. Verse, verse, pre-chorus, chorus, verse, verse, pre-chorus, chorus. And that's the song. That's one of the top two or three tracks on the album, I'd say. Um... Track nine is Neurotica, four minutes, 40 seconds. <laughs> All right, Neurotica, Neurotica, Exotica. It's just Erotica, Hypnotica. Mm -hmm. It's Psychotic, it's Psychotica, Chaotica. It's just Exotica, Neurotica. <sighs> That's another one of the top two or three tracks on the record. Um. The chorus is 16 bars, and then the bridge is 8 bars plus 8 bars, plus a time change that ends the beat, the last beat abruptly, and then a quick guitar solo after that. And the bridge, this is where the risk chance is in the song with, he's singing about Russian roulette. So, snap, hide in your shell, let the world go to hell. It's like Russian roulette to you. Snap. Sweat running cold, you can't face growing old. It's a personal threat to you. Snap, the world is a cage for your um, impotent rage, but don't let it get to you, snap. Okay. That's the that's the risk part. It's a verse, pre-chorus, chorus, verse, pre-chorus, chorus, bridge, a tiny guitar solo, and then a chorus. And then that's, um, that's Neurotica. I love Neurotica. Track 10 is You Bet Your Life, five minutes. Final song on the album. It's not a dud, but it, uh, it's not a Rush classic either. It's not like one of those songs I'm, um, uh, I go to war for. But it what it does is it reinforces the wind themes of the album, which is risk, chance, betting, odds, gambling, etc. Um... And in chorus one, he's singing, the odds get even, the odds get even, you bet your life. And then in the second part, anarchist, reactionary, running dog revisionist, Hindu, Muslim, Catholic, creation, evolutionist, r rational, romantic, mystic, cynical, idealist, minimal expressionist, postmodern, neo-symbolist. <laughs> That's awesome. So it's like what Neil has done is taken this whole idea of gambling or playing the odds or taking chances or making risks. And then he's sort of like woven it into a world geopolitical narrative. And that's not in every song, but it's in a few of the songs. And I guess in that sense, it's sort of, um, it's uh, what uh, the album from 85 
which I always want to say big generator, but that's a that's a yes album. Um, I'm having an old man senior moment. Uh, right here. Power Windows. Power Windows sort of has that um, that geopolitical, you know, the problems of the world sort of concept in it. And he's done a little bit of that in Roll the Bones, but also the but also the the whole gambling thing, risk taking, chancing. Okay. All right. In summary, Rush is trending in the right direction. Like I said, the days of the epic prog rockers are long gone, but these songs are much better than the previous two records. This is, I will say, this is the first Rush concept record. I mean, it's pretty tight from end to end. There's very little deviation in the concept. I mean, he's he's writing. I say he. I mean Neil Peart, who is the dominant lyric lyricist for Rush. He's writing about um, these concepts. It's mainly pop key and chords, so there's a lot of G, and then one is half tuned down to F sharp major with a minor. Um, but it's it's Rush, but they're not trying to be Michael Jackson or Boys to Men, which were huge back in the you know late 80s early 90s but keep in mind this is 1991 it's the year of pearl jam nirvana temple of the dog and the metallica black album and some other stuff so they're they're not openly when i say they rush rush is not openly engaging in that era of the music they're on rush is doing their own thing and they're not copying but they're what they're trying to do is like a fresh reinvention of their sound and that's what sort of stage four is. And when I say stage four, I just mean those four records before um, different stages. That's another that's another argument for another video. Stage four and stage five, which in my brain is different. Um, so yeah, I uh, cool record, okay? Much better than Hold Your Fire and Presto. And it's not all schmupsy like Hold Your Fire. Or, like, when I say schmupsy, I mean think Mariah Carey. It's not all schmaltzy and um, just, you know, all drippy, dripping. I don't mean drippy the way the Zoomers say it. I mean, like, dripping with that Mariah Carey crud. I mean, it's like, it's it's uh, tighter songs and more zip than Presto without the issues that plague the vocals on Presto, which is, it sounds like Getty Lee is 10 feet behind the microphone. They fix that. So the producer of this one, Rupert Hine, he did an excellent job, and they did a much better job just engineering it and mixing it. And the songs are better. Now, it gets a 3.10 on progarchives.com. In my opinion, that it should be much higher. To me, this is more like a 3.5 or a 4. Uh, 4 being essential. So I wouldn't say it's quite essential, but it's like that next level where this is a, this is a very good album. And uh, I think I think the Rush fans are unfair about it. You've got it ranked too low. Some people are saying this is the worst Rush record. No way. Nope. Uh, it's better than Power Windows, but not better than Grace Under Pressure. And for me, Grace Under Pressure is like one of those measuring stick albums for Rush, which is like, it's really awesome. But it's not their best work, but it's uh, I still really think it's awesome. So I think Roll the Bones fits right under that, but better than uh, better than this. Okay, better than this, but probably not better than this, right? Coach Plow Guy out, go Tar Heels.